Zero Accounting Software 2023. Add normal expenses to books from Bank Feed Limbo and make Bank Feed rules as we go. Get ready to become an accountant hero with Zero 2023. First, a word from our sponsor. Well, actually, these are just items that we picked from the YouTube Shopping Affiliate Program, but that's actually good for you because these aren't things that were just given to us from some large corporation which we don't even use in exchange for us selling them to you. These are things that we actually researched, purchased, and use ourselves. Bayer Dynamic, not sure if I said that right, but this is the DT770 Pro 250OHM Studio Reference Closed Back Headphones. I wear headphones basically every day for a large part of the day. They are important to me, therefore I've gone through many different kinds of headphones. I've had these for some time and they've worked quite well. They fit over my ears, but I'm still able to put my glasses on under the headphones, the headphones not pinching too tight on the glasses to give me a headache, which is nice. The quality of the patting is good and it has lasted for some time. I've had these for some time now and they haven't gotten all torn up on me or anything like that. I also like that I have a cord when I'm doing my recordings as opposed to a USB centered headphone because that frees up a USB port and I find the USB headphones to be less reliable. They come with an audio jack that looks like this, which is useful for me because that plugs into my audio interface. However, if you want to use the headphones for some other purpose, I believe it's fairly easy to get a converter to other types of audio jacks. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com where we have many different courses. You can purchase one at a time or have a subscription model giving you access to all the courses. Courses which are well organized have other resources like Excel files and PDF files to download and no commercials. Here we are in our custom Zero homepage going into the company file we set up in a prior presentation, that being the bank feed file. We're gonna now be duplicating some tabs because we wanna put our major two financial statement reports in them, the balance sheet and income statements so that we can see as we pull the information in from the bank feed limbo to the promised land of the financial statements, we can see how those financial statements are impacted and constructed from those transactions. To do that, we're gonna right click on the tab up top and we will duplicate that tab. We will right click on the duplicated tab because we want two reports and duplicate it again. Back to the middle tab, accounting dropdown. I'm gonna open up the balance sheet, which is typically in our favorite reports, therefore in this dropdown. As it's thinking, I will tab to the right, go to the accounting dropdown again. And this time the other financial statement report is the income statement report, the timing report, sometimes called the profit and loss, the P and the L. So let's go back to the first tab now. We're gonna be, my data is in the year of 2022. So you wanna make sure that you have the data, uh, the date here that corresponds to whatever data that you pulled in from your bank feed information. Tabbing to the right, I'm gonna change this to 2022. So I'll do it with a custom range down below, January of 2022, starting there, ending December of 2022. And so there we have it. I'm gonna update that report. Now, of course, nothing is in these reports thus far because all we have done is pull the information in from our bank into bank feed limbo. The system doesn't have enough information to pull it from there into the financial statements. What it needs is at least an account and most likely we would want to add a vendor and a customer as well, a contact. In other words, as we do that, we can make bank rules to pull that information in in a more automated fashion going forward, making it easier going forward. But this first uh, time around, it's more difficult. Now note that as we make the bank rules, if I hit the drop down here and we go into our chart of accounts, we have basically cleared out our chart of accounts a lot so that we can construct our chart of accounts as we go. 
and that will that will allow us to have more of a customized chart of accounts if you're a little worried and you don't want to do that remember that you can keep zero's chart of accounts that the the generic accounts that they gave you which are somewhat standard but it's not a completely standardized thing and then try to use those accounts when applicable only adding new accounts when you don't have one that looks appropriate for you also as we add accounts remember keep in mind the account number construction so if something is a balance sheet account or an asset account for example you want it to start with a one if it's a liability account you want it to start with a two if it's an equity account you want it to start with a three income account a four and uh the expense accounts a five or a six maybe you want the fives for a cost of goods sold types accounts and maybe we'll make all of our expense accounts somewhere in the six thousand range also note as you are adding these account numbers make sure to leave enough room between each account number so that if you wanted to add another account in the future you put one you can you have the ability to do so so if i label something 5000 and the next one 5001 i will not be able to put one in between those two accounts and my account numbers will be all messy so what i'd like to do is have the 5000 the next one having some good space at least 5010 or 5050 right go in increments so that you can add more accounts in between all right that said let's go into our bank feeds accounting drop down we're going to go into the accounts and we're going to go into I'll, i like to do it this way account drop down and then account transactions last time we added the information so there's nothing in uh, the account transactions because we didn't enter anything on our side the bank statement transactions has everything we pulled in uh, from the bank on this side of things in other words this is what we pulled in from the bank feeds notice that all of them say unreconciled because we haven't tied them out to anything on our side of the system we don't have anything on our side of the system because we will primarily be making our accounting system from this information so then we can go into the cash coding now this is a quicker kind of uh way to do the data input because you can sort like by payee or by date so if you're pulling in a lot of information this might be a little bit faster way to see things on a side-by-side -side basis but then we have the normal reconciliation on the left hand side which is going to give you the information on the bank side and then it gives you your information uh, that we can match to if we had anything on our side or we can create the transaction as we go uh, from here so that's going to be our items also note that if you hit the drop down you can you delete the statement line and you can create a bank rule which is what we will be doing quite often making the bank rules will help us in future transactions when we have a similar uh, line item so that we can assign it to the proper account and more easily pull it in to the financial statements so I'm going to go down and look for some particular types of transactions so I'm going to scroll down to 823 and I'm looking for like the SoCal gas so you can see these are going to be in basically the alphabetical order so if I scroll through here I've got this one SoCal uh, gas and so I'd like to make a transaction for this one and this is I want to start with this one because this is a normal kind of transaction the gas bill the telephone bill these kind of things are the easiest things typically if they are electronic transfers to be pulling in uh with just an automated bank feed that you can then make a rule for that will make the automated process a lot easier going forward so if we were going to enter this transaction this is kind of a shorthand or shortcut enter which is like a pay money uh, type of form a money out like kind of like a check type of form so who's the contact now if we haven't been adding contacts then usually we can often find the contact in the bank me memo kind of area this is like the text that came in from the bank now you could use this whole thing as the contact but usually you're probably going to say well the, the contact looks like the SoCal gas so I'm going to copy that and say that's going to be my contact I'm going to add the contact now you want to be careful with the contacts that you don't add another contact next time which says SoCal gas paid or something like that that's a slightly different name and you do want to make sure that you do add the contacts because if you enter the data without a contact 
uh, you, you might be able to still do it and have an account number, but you won't have that added level of searchability by searching your data by contacts, which is, you might as well have. Uh, so choose an account. Now we do, we've removed many of the accounts, so we don't have a lot of accounts to choose from. So we are in essence gonna be creating our accounts as we go. Now it doesn't give us the capacity to add from here. So we're gonna go into our chart of accounts, but let's first go through the rest of them. Why you could put a description, you might put the range of the gas that was paid from date to date, or, or you know, uh, so you could put more detail there. If there's tax applied, you've got your tax items on the dropdown. And then you've got the add details. Now, if you go into the add details, it's going to give you an expansion. Again, basically kind of a pay money uh, type of form. So you got the SoCal gas, the uh, date, the reference. And then down here, if it was an inventory item that we were purchasing, we would choose the item. Uh, otherwise, we're going to not choose the item. So normally you wouldn't have an item, but you do need, of course, an account. So the account then on the drop down, this is where it gives us the capacity to add the account kind of as we go. So I'm going to say add the account. And I'm going to say the type of account is going to be an expense account. That's going to be your typical, uh, the typical format when you're, uh, when you're, there it is, when you're, uh, when you're, have money out forms. Usually it's an expense, not always, because it might be a, you pull the money out uh, as the owner. In, in that case, it would be a draw or equity account, or you might have bought a fixed asset or something or inventory. But we're going to say, now I'm going to put 6,000, 6,010. So I'm going to try to pick numbers that are within the, the expense category, starting with a six and leave enough space with them. So, so at least five or 10 uh, spaces between them. So that's my general strategy. Udemy, uh, Udemy. Uh, this is going to be, what was this? This was utilities, utilities. Did I spell that right? Uh, I think so. There is a spell check in here. So if you spell something wrong, it should tell you. Description down below, tax, uh, if tax uh, applies to this account. So that's all we need here. So we're good. So I'm going to save it. So now we have that applied out. That looks good. And if we had other lines that we need to apply it out to, we can apply it to other lines. But usually with these basic transactions, it's fairly straightforward. We paid the utility bill, money out form. It's already cleared the bank because we did it with an electronic transfer. This will simply then record a decrease to the cash and an increase to the utilities, which will decrease uh, the net income on the income statement. Now, what we would like to do also Notice if I scroll back up to the options here is create a rule. So this is going to be quite important as you, especially as you start out, because that will make it so it's easier going forward. So I'm going to say, let's make a rule basically as we go here. And so uh, apply a bank rule, any conditions match all conditions. So when we apply a rule, we're telling zero, hey, look, look at the detail that came through remember the detail that comes through from the bank is just going to be the date the the text transfer that comes from the from the bank and the amount that's all that's all it has so now we're going to say based on that information follow these conditions we can have it follow uh any of the conditions if any of the conditions match then the logic test goes like this if any of the conditions match then apply this rule or we can say it, have it more constricted and say, you have to have all of these conditions match before you apply this rule. So I'm gonna keep it at any condition. And then we have the field of the payee uh, equals, and then you've got the value over here. So I'm gonna hit the drop down. our options. The fields are the payee, the description, the amount, the reference, the analysis code. I think the any text field is the broadest category. So that's the one I'm gonna use uh, most often say any of the text fields, if they equal, I'm not going to say equal, uh, because I'm going to say contains, because I that's all I need, I don't need it to be exact. If they change this coding a little bit, that's fine. And I'm just going to say it, all it needs to contain is SoCal gas. If it does that, then I want you to apply the rule. Now on the description, sometimes we'll get into more complex rules, where you might be able to use some of the data in the field to kind of differentiate where, what rule you want to apply. If I paid 
two gas bills for two different locations, maybe some of this information in the coding and the description and whatnot could help us to differentiate between them. But this one's pretty straightforward. We're just gonna say we paid the gas bill. That's what, all we want. So set the contact. Uh, so the contact is gonna be SoCal gas. And so we're gonna say, okay. So there we have that. Allocate the line items. So a uh, description we have. So I've added a new line. If I have a description of some kind for gas bill, account is gonna be the utilities that we set up. Utilities, uh, didn't go utilities. And then no tax rate. And then uh, we want the amount to be applied, 100% to be applied. Let's actually do it down here. This is if I want a fixed amount to be applied, but I don't want to have a fixed amount because the bill might change. So I want to apply it out by percent. So let's actually delete that and put it down here where I'm going to say this is going to be the description gas bill. This is going to be the account utilities. And so we'll pick that one up no tax and we'll have 100% applied. I don't need any other line. Now, again, this is kind of a nice rule format because it allows us to apply out to different accounts if we needed to break the same bill out to different accounts on a percentage basis or on a, a dollar amount basis. So set the reference so we can have the reference coming. So this is the reference on the form from, from, uh, from the reference, from the description, from the payee check number, analysis code i'm going to say from the description and then add rule details do i want the rule to apply just to the checking account or we can have it apply to all accounts now we only have a checking account set up but uh, if we had multiple checking accounts you might have rules that are applicable just to the checking account you're in or to multiple checking accounts so you can select either of those the name of the rule is pulling in from the description name of the socal gas so you can, that's usually a good description name. So when we actually go look up the rule, that's what the rule will be. So let's go ahead and save that. And so now that rule should be applied. And if I scroll down, we can see then the rule, the rule being applied out. So now we have this here, we can edit the rule uh, if we think it shouldn't be applied. So they're linked out at this time. We can see the details again. Uh, in this fashion. So here's the details. Let's go ahead and save the transaction. And since, and then I'm going to reconcile. I'm going to say, okay, reconcile it. So what's that going to do? It's going to pull the transaction. The transaction has been made now and is pulling into the financial statements. So if I then go to the balance sheet and I update the balance sheet, we can see now that we have created a checking account. So if I drill down on that 37.66, it's a negative number because we don't have the beginning balances in the checking account yet. But if I go into that, there's our transaction. Now note that if I go into this, it says it's a spend money form. So if I go into the spend money form, it's not gonna take me to the bank feeds or to the rules. It's gonna take me to a spend money form. Remember that these forms in this dropdown, even when you're using the bank feeds, these are really the forms that are the default that Zero wants to use. The other data input forms from the bank feeds are kind of like shortcut, you know, to, to the data input of these forms. So let's go back to the balance sheet. And then if I go to the income statement, tapping to the right and update again, now we've got the utilities that pulled through here as an expense uh, type of account. So that looks good. Let's go back to the first tab. Now note that if you wanted to look at your rules, you can go to the accounting dropdown and uh, the bank accounts if you want to look at all of your rules and look at the bank rules here. And so then you've got your SoCal rule. And if you needed to edit this rule, you can go into here and you can make your changes to the rules as needed. So these rules, of course, are quite important to get right you know, the first time so that so that they will apply out properly going forward and they're difficult to make or not too difficult but you know it's kind of a pain to make the rules at first but once they're made then they're great now also note here that if i go to you could see if i go to the cash coding that that rule has basically been applied 
to a couple other transactions, right? The utilities uh, here has been applied out. We could find that if I go back to the, the first tab. And if I go through this and I scroll down, I'm gonna say, okay, uh, let's just, uh, hold on, I went to the end of it. I went to the end of it. Let's go back to the start and we'll see a little blue box on the one that has the rule that has been applied, right? So I'm gonna scroll through here and the next bit and the next bit, I think it's in September that we saw it. Uh, and there, there's one. So now you can see this is being applied out uh, with the rule, meaning the rule is trying to create this transaction. This isn't a transaction that we created uh, because the, the rule is creating it. We haven't put any transactions in on our side. Now note also that if I go to uh, the bank tab, this represents the information that was pulled in from the bank. And you can see here that we're going to have that transaction has now been reconciled. So we've reconciled that one transactions now, right? So if I go to the account uh, transactions tab on uh, the right hand side, now we have a transaction that was recorded on our side, also having been reconciled. This is what we created from the bank feed as a transaction on our side. Also just note that in the contacts drop down, if I go to, to the all contacts, we have set up our contact of the SoCal gas so we can track the information by the contact, the person we're paying as well. All right, let's go back into the accounting dropdown, bank accounts again, and let's do another one. I'm gonna hit the dropdown. We're gonna go into the account uh, transactions again, and let's go to the first tab. And this one's gonna be, a, I, I'm gonna do a Verizon one. There's one on 815. Got a pesky fly in here. It's driving me crazy. 815 Verizon. So here's one telephone. Another very standard uh, type of type of transaction. So let's go ahead and make the rule. Now note that if you don't make a rule, by the way, uh, you've got this thing down here where it says suggest previous entries. So zero could give you suggestions in the following month based on what you entered last time. So if you just enter transactions, it, it'll give you suggestions, but that's far less like uh, uh, effective because you, you can't, you don't have as much control over the rules. So you, so what you'd like to do is set your own rules typically as you go. So you can tell zero exactly what you want to happen, have happen ex instead of just having it kind of guess what you're going to have happen. And usually, you know, the guesses are usually pretty good because usually these are going to be fairly straightforward, but you can find many situations where, uh, you know, it could mess you up if you just basically are reliant on the prior transaction instead of creating a rule and it might not be as fast. So if I apply a rule on this one, I'm just going to go straight to the applying of the rule. So I'm going to say any content, uh, any conditions to match it. I want the payee. I don't want just the payee field. I want to say any text field. If any text field equals is too stringent, that's too stringent. I want to say if it contains, if the text field contains just Verizon wireless, that's all you need. And then I don't need any other conditions. So I'm going to just remove the second condition, set the, the uh, contact. So an existing uh, or new contact. So I'm going to say it's going to be a new contact, which I want to be pulling in just the Verizon wireless. I'm just going to make a new contact as we go. Let's create that contact. Okay. And then I want it to allocate 100% of the transaction to one account. So we're going to say it's going to be Verizon. It's going to be telephone, you know, and we're going to say the account is going to be, I have to add one. We don't have telephone expense. So I'm going to say, uh, let's add the account and they won't add, they won't uh, let me add it in this area. So the, I think the easiest thing to do is I'm going to cancel the rule for now and I'm going to try to add it while I'm over here and then I'll go back in. So, so I'm going to try to say, uh, let's add it this way. So this is going to be variety. Let's, let's say I'm going to add details down below. And then I'm going to say it's going to be to Verizon wireless reference, da, 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 and then I'll add the account. 
which I'm going to add on the fly. So now they let me add it as I'm flying here on the fly. And the account is going to be an expense account. Can I just type in expense code? I'm just going to say is six, uh, six, two, zero, six, zero, two, zero. And the name is going to be the telephone. Now, notice that you have some control now over whether you want the telephone under utilities, break it out separately. That's why uh, it'll change from company to company. Do you want the gas bill and the electric bill under utilities or do you want to break them all out? Do you want to try to create a sub account of like utilities and then have telephone gas and electric underneath it, which you could do with the formatting of the financial statements in zero. So, there, so this is where you have a lot more flexibility with these expense forms. How exactly do you want it to be reported? And it, it might differ depending on how much, how much, how relevant the expense is to your particular business. So let's go ahead. And so that looks good. Now, now I'm going to go back up top and uh, see if we can go back into the options, options up top and create the rule. So now I'm going to create the rule now that I have the account that I need for the rule. So it's going to be any condition. I'm going to say any text field again, not equals, but contains Verizon wireless. I don't need the payments. I'm going to copy the wire Verizon wireless. I'm going to delete the second condition and then uh, an existing or new contact Verizon Verizon wireless that we set up. And so then down here, description, the, um, the account now is going to be the telephone, which we have now set up. Good, no tax per hundred percent applied to it. So I'm going to keep this as just from the reference checking account only the name of the rule is pulling in as Verizon wireless. That's fine. So I'm going to save it. So the rule has been uh, done now. So if I scroll down and say, all right, so now it's, it's got this one applied out using the rule. So now when I say, okay, it's going to create this item and match it at the same time, which will create a new transaction and do the reconciliation process. So let's go ahead and say, okay. And then if I go to the balance sheet and update it, now I can go into my checking account. I have this negative amount in the checking account balancing out to the current year earnings, which are in the equity account, going into the balance sheet account to check it out. Now we have these two items in here, the telephone and gas bills. So we just put in the Verizon. Notice it's a money out for or form or a spend money form. And then if I go into the income statement and update the income statement, there we have our telephone. Now, if you wanted to make these sub accounts, you can do that with this cool uh, edit layout. So if you wanted like to have a parent account of utilities and then use those as sub accounts, you can select, hold down control, multiple of these and group them together. And so you've got a lot of flexibility. Once you get good at that, uh, it's way more flexible than even like a, a QuickBooks sub account kind of structure. So I'm going to go now I just logged out of my income statement for some reason. I don't know what I did. Uh, but I will go I'll make it back in there again. Let's go back in. I know I didn't want to go out of there. Let's customize the date. And this is going to be 2022. Uh, January to December 2022 update. Okay, so if I go back to the first tab, uh, all other telephone should be marked off. So if I go to my cash coding, I can kind of see that most easily in here. So now the telephone is kind of being applied out uh, to this one for Verizon. So if I went and scrolled through, I'd see that little blue button for all of the telephone, making it like a, just a click away to add them and create the transaction. The bank statements now, uh, now these represent what we pulled in, just the bank statement side, most of them being... Uh, unreconciled but if we go into this one has now been reconciled for the Verizon and if I go to the account transactions this is our side of the account transactions impacting the checking account 
we made these two transactions from the bank feed and connected them together at the same time, constructing our financials from the bank feeds. And if I go to the contact dropdown, looking at all contacts, we've been constructing our contacts as we've been doing the bank feeds. All right, now just note that if we if we wanted to take a look at our rules, we can go to the accounting dropdown, banking, and we can take a look at our uh, rules. So now we've got these two rules set up. If we needed to adjust them, we could uh, edit the rules. I'm gonna close this up top, edit the rules on the right hand side, and that's it. So now notice one way I'm gonna go to the tab to the right that we can look at our, our financial statements now is a trial balance, which is a balance sheet on top of the income statement. So I'm gonna right click and duplicate again, because I think the trial balance is the easiest report to kind of see everything being constructed without all the subtotals and see both the balance sheet and the income statement. So it has debits and credits in it, however, but we have to deal with that. If you're not used to the debits and credits, it's not too bad. You don't need to be an expert to see the value of the trial balance. So I just typed in trial balance into the reports and we're looking at the trial balance now. So now you can see, this is basically just the balance sheet on top of the income statement without any subtotals. So now you've got the cash up top affected and notice on the balance sheet, what we have here is the checking account. And then this represents equity, which they're saying is the current earnings. The current earnings on the income statement will roll into equity, typically retained earnings or the capital account on the balance sheet. That's how the two things are connected. So they're really just one big report. They're really one T account uh, for accounting, double entry accounting, one T account, debits and credits, or one accounting equation, assets equal liabilities plus equity. But this, but then the income statement gives you more detail about what's actually happening on the timing statement that, that will close out to the permanent accounts in the equity section of the balance sheet. So you can see that on a trial balance, where we just have the balance sheet account of the 101.51 and then the timing accounts of the expenses, which make up net income, which typically closes into the balance sheet. So that so so this is an easy report to kind of see things constructed, bare bones, simple. And it's also a nice report that if you're doing data input, you can go into this report and drill down on the on the numbers to see what is happening in a quicker fashion. So I, when I'm typically, when I'm working, oftentimes I might want, I might just have my trial balance open instead of a balance sheet and an income statement. If I just simply want to use the trial balance to verify that the data input is a impact in the accounts, I think it should impact because once I do the data input, I can go into the trial balance and use that great tool of drilling back down from the report to the source document, right? And so I could drill back down to the source document and the source document is not going to be then the, the actual uh, bank feeds, but rather the forms that were created from the more simplified data inputs of the bank feeds. In this case, of course, spend money forms. Now these, these couple that we did here represent, I think the most easy kind of transactions, those that are easily repetitive if we use electronic payments to pay them. If we use check the checks to pay them, then we would want to enter the check first and match it to the bank feeds. But if they're electronic transfers, easy to, to do those. We'll, and then we'll do some more that are, are fairly straightforward. And then we'll get into some sometimes where the bank feeds are a little bit more tricky and we have to make possibly more complex rules or something like that and be mindful of, of the data input as it's pulling in from the bank feeds.